Hey everyone, welcome back to Remember This Tech. Today I'm going to do a combo unboxing of a new product and what am I reviewing? What am I looking at today? Well, let's take a look. We have the Orange Pi 5 here and this box is a little dented up, a little squished. Hopefully it uh, made it through the mailing process, but You've all seen and heard about Raspberry Pi. It's been around for a while, right? Well, yeah, they're decent made mini computers, right? But the problem is today is that getting your hands on one is a little bit more difficult because of production um, slowdowns and demand. And not only that, you can't buy it at the price point that it's supposed to sell at, right? And the scalpers are charging way more than what you would be able to get it for if you were buying it at what it's supposed to sell at. Here in comes the alternatives to the um, Raspberry Pi. One of those just happens to be the Orange Pi. So it's there's no real padding in the box. It's just a it's just an anti-static bag. And to open it up, let's see what's in here. And I will link a video of the full specifications of it right after I show you what the board looks like. First hands-on look, for me that is. And I'm carefully trying to put this up to the camera. There is no built-in Wi-Fi, but there is a gigabit NIC port two USB 3.0 ports here, and one USB. And if we flip it around, there's a SD card, S, micro SD card slot. There is a HDMI output, which technically supports 8K output. There is one uh, USB-C port here and here, and one is only, well, I've read, don't quote me on this, but one is just dedicated for possible power, the other one, or peripherals, and the other one is for transferring stuff. But there's a barrel port here. So one of these is definitely just for power, and one's for transfer. There's actual an IO port here, right here. And then there is a, what appears to be an interface port for an LCD. There is a actual little button on the board here, but I have yet to research that. What's different and set this apart from, let's say the Raspberry 4B, is that on the back of the board, if you can see that, it's a mini NVMe slot. So you can, hugely increase your speeds versus the micro SD slot card if you're going to boot OS's and actually utilize the speed of this system. I guess it has the Rock Pi chip um, at 2.4 gigahertz and a 610 um, video chip as well. And I chose the eight gigabyte model um, for memory and you can go four, eight, 16, and I think maybe even a 32 model. And to go with that, I bought some copper heat sinks for all the chips. We have here a micro NVMe, 128 gig, which we're gonna hopefully test and install and get that to work. And then I've got this four amp USB-C power supply for the unit. Take a look next on the full specification of this board. In theory, the chip has way more power than the Raspberry 4 Pi B, but just check it out for yourself. Here is the Orange Pi 5 overview for specifications. Please press pause if you need more time to review. Has an eight core 64 bit processor, clocking up to 2.4 gigahertz. The model I bought was eight gig of RAM, DDR4. It has a full size HDMI port out supporting 8K video codec. Type C power supply, compact 
micro flash card. As you can see, the CPU versus past revisions of the chip, it's up to four times faster. Up to 8K video codec with 60 FPS. Supports NVMe, SSD, hard drive. Different versions of uh, OS supported would be Droid and Orange Pi and many others. Here's a few specifications for the board. This is where your NVMe card goes. Here's the pinout for the 26 pin header. In conclusion for this unboxing unveiling for the Orange Pi 5 SPC, I'm going to tell you right now as a, um, a little hint for my upcoming video where I review this and show you about the installation of the various operating systems and testing of it and all that good stuff. I'm telling you right now that it doesn't come with heat sinks. But the reason why I bought them and installed them is because I knew that this thing was probably going to get hot. And a little secret is, stay tuned for that next video where I do a complete review of this. It gets very hot under load. You need to buy and install heat stinks at a very minimum. And I highly recommend purchasing a case, maybe active cooling in conjunction with these um, heat sinks. So that's a little advanced view of the upcoming video that I have coming out for this. So stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed because you don't want to miss this one. So you probably want to know how much I pay for all this, including the power supply, the micro VME, and the, more, the board, and the little copper heat sinks. Well, it was about 150 give or take, and you can probably get that cheaper if you shop around maybe AliExpress, but this is what I paid on Amazon and they fluctuate and you can get it cheaper for a, a model with lesser RAM, but of course they scale up and with models with the 16 gig or 32 gig. So shop around, see what best fits your needs and go from there. Thanks for watching. Remember this tech.